reading. Oh, f lots of reading and fucking legalese reading at that. Honestly, all this robot law reading bullshit might as well just be production logos. That's how much attention I'm paying it. Also, all these laws seem to only revolve around bodily harm or death to humans and nothing else. Maybe Isaac Asimov watched The Purge and Futurama back to back. I'm not sure, but you'd think he'd put something else in there regarding ethics. God gave us humans 10 laws and only one of them was don't hurt each other. Main character wakes up from a nightmare cliche, incorrectly eating pie. Also, it's alarming how easily this movie's opening few minutes of Will Smith doing shit could substitute for the opening few minutes of Will Smith doing shit and I am legend. Alarming, I tells you. Also, showering without a shower curtain. How does anything stay dry in that bathroom? Get the hell out of my face, Canner. You can hate robots, that's fine, but don't you want your package? Honestly, like, let's be truthful with each other here. That hat is the worst thing about this movie. And yes, I know the movie is a giant turd, that's how bad that hat is. Excuse me, sir. Main character's disdain for robots absolutely hammered home by the four minute mark. If you've come for subtlety, aw, oh, hell no. Also, if the robots have all the shit jobs, what's the unemployment rate like in 2035? Closing in on 50%? God damn it, young Shia LaBeouf dragged this movie into him, didn't he? Stop cussing, cause you're not good at it. That's for sure, but still, he said, let me borrow your damn ass keys, which is more an assault on basic grammar than it is an assault on cussing. Actually, he barely even cussed. Whatever, I already hate this movie. Nice going, movie. At the beginning of Spooner's sneaky crawl, he's only at the second opening in the hallway, but as soon as Gigi says, You talk to Marcy? He makes it all the way to the stairs, making Spooner the fastest stealth crawler in the world. Congratulations. When I was coming up, we didn't just marry someone, then divorce them, then not talk to them. Ah, old granny. You're as stuffed with exposition as you are old. Sweet potato pie. Why the hell does he keep eating pie like this? I don't know. I don't live in the future, but isn't assuming a running robot carrying a purse is a thief kind of a huge leap in logic? Freeze! Stop! This robot is violating the second law. You've already forgotten the laws, you say? Me too. This is a long-ass parking garage. I think it's about time we recognize Will Smith's Tom Cruise-like ability to run in most of his movies. Men in Black, Men in Black 2, I Am Legend, I Robot, Bad Boys, Bad Boys 2, Enemy of the State, Hancock, Suicide Squad. You are an asshole. Character development via eyewitnesses. But since she's right, I'm mostly okay with this. He is an asshole. How many robots have ever snatched a purse? To be fair, snatching a purse is not in violation of any of the laws. Theft isn't technically harmful. And when you're a robot, everything is technical. Discount Stark Tower Khalifa. I'm sorry. My responses are limited. You must ask the right questions. Dr. Lanning programmed his response hologram to be just ambiguous enough to move the plot forward just a little bit during each interaction, because nothing makes a movie more interesting than a scavenger hunt. Why would you kill yourself? That detective is the right question. Yet we still don't receive an answer. Program terminated. How and why did you record a program of your future interaction with a detective investigating your death before- I'll oh, forget it. This movie's IMDb score is low enough, I bet I can fake my way through this shit. Sugar. For the coffee. Sugar. Ah. Oh, oh, you thought I was calling you sugar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, comedy. I don't know, maybe you simply would have banned the internet to keep the libraries open. You motherfuckers closed the libraries? Monsters. That's the most fucked up thing in this entire movie. Lawrence told me to accommodate you in any way possible. Really? Being pretty rapey. Little known fact, Tom Brady left girlfriend and baby mama Bridget Moynihan for Giselle because of how bad this movie turned out. True story. Danny Amendola told me. Apologies. There appears to be data corruption. So no video of the suicide murder? Great. This might as well be set in the 50s based on the evidence he has to go on. Also, Spooner, who has been overly suspicious of everything thus far, glosses over the data corruption excuse without any further questioning or investigating. Every time he puts on the hat, this mother takes the extra time to ensure the left side is covering 30% of his ear, and it's maybe the most annoying thing ever. Not having vertigo. Not these laws. They're hardwired into every robot. How are they hardwired exactly? Are there three separate first, second, and third law wires that are installed? A robot can no more commit murder than a human could walk on water. You know, there was this one guy. <sighs> Stealing the if he's not guilty, why did he run motive from every episode of Matlock ever? Holy sh**, robots constructed to serve coffee and be butlers were also constructed to survive 18-story jumps. And mostly I'm just asking, why? Police! <laughs> he got down here that fast? F***ing no. F***ing not bloody likely. Jesus. Thank God he hit the whatever with his bullet that conveniently drips out liquid mercury one drop at a time so he could track this thing. I mean, imagine if that hadn't happened. You've heard it. Badly. Badly is an adverb, meaning that the method Will Smith used to hurt the robot was poor, when what you mean to say is that the robot's wounds are severe. Do you see me on the phone? You All the more reason you shouldn't be driving. Audible skidding sounds from a hovering car. So where is everybody? This facility was designed, built, and is operated mechanically. So are you the first humans ever to set foot here? Where are the checks and balances, people? I want to trust robots as much as the next guy, but I can't do that as long as I know you're letting them run this free. Why give robots super strength? You're just asking for an army of passionless creatures that can't be defeated. All of those SWAT team bullets managed to miss. Insert Stormtrooper joke here. All those bullets, and you simply needed to think like Spider-Man to bring him down. 
What if I'm right? After several minutes of the boss explaining how stupid his theory was, this guy still changes said boss's mind with a simple what if I'm right. If everyone believes that this robot doesn't have the capacity to kill, then I guess these six guards are actually just an acapella group or something. My father tried to teach me human emotions. They are difficult. I'm going to choose this moment here among many to praise Alan Tudyk for his performance in this film as the robot, and we'll take two sins off a movie I know will go on to earn enough for that two sin reduction to not affect the ultimate score, but still show respect for an actor who is great. Can a robot write a symphony? Probably, yeah. Maybe even a kick-ass one. I think maybe your anti-robot prejudice is making you say some stupid shit. <laughs> Super tiny cell phones of the future. Imagine struggling to tell the difference between your phone and your flash drive. That's the future. There isn't some hard kill switch on these robots. Even Data on Star Trek had an off button. Meanwhile, at the Ovaltine Cafe. Wait, Ovaltine Cafe? What the f? You want me to call your grandmother? Because hmm? I will, you know. How cop bosses talk to their detectives. Total 4650. Inflation. Demolition scheduled for 8 a.m. Spooner doesn't question why this is going to be demolished. It's a large mansion, still fully furnished, and contains Dr. Lanning's personal materials, and possibly very useful information. Yet USR is going to destroy it, and no one's going to worry about it. Welcome, Detective Spooner. Spooner still has access to Lanning's house for some reason. There have always been ghosts in the machine. Roll credit. Oh, wait. Wrong movie. Beat it. Will Smith learned nothing of the usefulness of cats from his time on Men in Black. This cat somehow doesn't scratch off Will Smith's face during the sequence, suggesting the movie has never catted. This thing just broke through the hallway window upstairs, at a good 40 feet from here. Not only do I not think it can move fast enough to be here right now, it also seems to be destroying the house based on what room Will Smith is in, which is absurd. Also, he survives this and everything else that happens in this scene, which is some astronomical bullshit. Like this, for example. I mean, did you see that shit? Even the cat is James Bond right now, Jesus. The English language has no words for how much this pissed me off. Therefore, I will resort to French. Also, most convenient moat pond ever. Also, this cat just went through all that shit and then got dunked underwater and still has not clawed out even a single one of Will Smith's eyes. Also, this cat was definitely covered in water for the sake of this scene, which, if you know cats, basically qualifies as animal torture. Whatever, as long as no horses were harmed in the making of this movie, I guess we don't care. How does he know where she lives? What happened to you? Calvin says this instead of, why are you at my house? We just met this morning and I don't like you. He postulated that- Every conversation between these two goes like this. Spooner asks a specific question. Calvin gives Spooner a ridiculously complicated answer. Spooner goes, what? And Calvin scoffs and says it normally. They do this because she's a smart person, he's a dumb person, and runtime. Suggested that robots might naturally evolve. Awesome. You still went through with making them then? You want something to be wrong with them. This is a personal vendetta. Maybe, but as a woman of science, that shouldn't matter. He has evidence enough to form a hypothesis. Just let him work it out, yo. You are the dumbest smart person I have ever met in my life. Well, you've clearly never met Chris then. I mean, me. Sh Chris will be mad if I make that joke about him, but I'm concerned it's not funny enough if I make it about me. Maybe Barrett? Ah, oh, f*** it. Will Smith makes pretending to drink whiskey look like an impossible task. If robots aren't supposed to have emotions, then why does this one look so sad? Yes, hello, I'd like to report a complaint regarding my NS5. It keeps giving me seductive looks while it chops phallic vegetables. Future security systems don't need your fingerprint or your eye scan. Just the butt end of a balled up fist, somehow. Access USR mainframe. Accessing mainframes and doing general detective work while driving at a high rate of speed. It's convenient that there are no other drivers on this interstate that runs through urban Chicago, so these giant robot trucks could attack in this formation. Oh, hell no. It's not a Will Smith movie if he doesn't say, oh, hell no, or I mean damn. You'd think that they'd come up with a less expensive way to try and kill Spooner, but it seems like they went with the most expensive way. Thankfully for the viewer, whenever a robot is turned evil in this movie, his chest glows red instead of blue. And while the movie has no explanation for that, mine is quite simple. The movie sucks balls and thinks the viewers are all morons. Not only is this car spin at high speed problematic in the world of logic, it also somehow doesn't result in all the robots flying off, which is even more problematic. Yeah, he's totally passed out after these excessive g-forces, no question about it, except for the movie totally glossing over it and keeping him coherent. Well, he's not a robot and is the main character, so I guess he survives this shit, even though that's anger-inducing levels of bullshit. I just threw up, and that's the sin. Holy shit, he's one of them! He's one of them! And by that I mean most predictable thing ever. Sonny has the three laws, but he can choose not to obey them. Sounds kind of like the three laws don't mean shit, doesn't it? Play. I guess in the future it's not rude just to walk into someone's house and play with their stereo. Okay, he has a robot arm and that's all. Great. Still doesn't explain his unhinged hatred of robots, or how he was able to spray paint his arm back together. But whatever. I'm wild by your sci-fi-ness movie. Sarah. This was hers. So you kept and are wearing the necklace of one of the victims of the car crash that cost you your arm? 
Yeah, that's normal. Jesus, how did you even get this without stealing it from the morgue? Save the girl! Save her! So Will Smith's character hates robots because they saved him instead of the little girl. Fine, I understand that motivation. But my question is, why did that robot save him instead of the girl? Eh, well, you know what they say about old dogs. No. Not really. Right, this society has autonomous robots, but hasn't downloaded basic Wikipedia knowledge into their brains so they can understand idioms. Right. I had hoped you would come to think of me as your friend. Even though the last interaction they had, Sonny tried to kill him, he's still an optimist. His name is Sonny, for Christ's sake. I'm sorry, I'm allergic to bullshit. Hey, asshole, that's my line. I'm so sorry, Sonny. What are you sorry about? His recent malfunctioning? Jesus, movie, these are robots, and 95% of humans would not get attached to them. Will it hurt? Why did these humans program this robot with the concept of pain? Why the f were you wearing sunglasses? It's fucking nighttime, dude. Why is it that when robots are stored in an empty space, they will group together rather than stand alone. Why are they all still on? And how did they not run out of power in those crates? The three laws apparently led to robot chaos. Fine. But why did said robot chaos begin without warning and devolve within minutes into a scene out of Gangs of New York? Upon seeing a single human, these robots stopped beating up other robots and collectively chased said human. Because reasons? Why were they beating up other robots just before this only to shift into human hating mode on a dime? Do they no longer want to beat robot ass as well? Human name in danger. Oh, I see. Half the reject homeless robots still value human life while the other half have evolved to rightfully hate human life. Do I have that right? Why does the three laws programming only affect infect half the robot population? And reluctantly, Bridget Moynihan signed the divorce papers. I mean contract, knowing it contained an exploitative steamy shower scene. Not gonna lie, totally forgot Shia was in this. That's how unimportant his character is. Instead of completely wind blocking or rib breaking this asshole, this robot chest punch merely throws him back 15 yards and causes him to make a concerned facial expression. Wait, when we last left her, she was half naked coming out of the shower and realizing her personal robot was gonna kill her. Now we cut to this? The f happened in between? This crowd of stupid humans marching on the robots has seen V for Vendetta one too many times. Stupid humans. Farber somehow gets to be the leader of the impossibly colossal Chicago teen mob. Why doesn't that boy listen? Spooner runs into one of the three people he knows during the robot riot. <laughs> Some bullshit. This chick fires this machine gun like this and somehow only hits the bad robot, which is actually preposterous. Did you just shoot at me with your eyes closed? Well, it worked, didn't it? Here's some more ridiculous results-oriented thinking. Just because it worked does not mean it wasn't a stupid as f***ing hell decision. Sudden trapdoor entrance is both completely out of nowhere and out of the sight line of the red robot and a huge f***ing ex machina. Service areas. No surveillance. Because why would we ever want to keep tabs on those servicing our super high-tech robot lab building? 2,880 steps, detective. Movie is telling me they walked up all those steps without even being slightly winded or sweaty. Are we sure they aren't all robots? This thing's basically the metal baby face from Matrix Revolutions. I would prefer not to kill Dr. Calvin. <sighs> yep, this robot is so human it picked up and assimilated the wink when you're lying thing from 7th grade kids interactions. Spooner and the gang are able to move freely in the USR headquarters despite Vicky's omnipotence. Just don't look down. Don't look down. Uh, this is poor building planning. He's right, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to send this movie for this building's poor planning. <laughs> this works for some reason. Thank you for this vertigo-inducing camera swoop. Guy who will clearly go on to direct or at least inspire a Ninja Turtles movie. This shit is awesome, but why is Sonny so much better at fighting than the other robots? Again with the vertigo camera twirl? Jesus, Alex Proyas, you made good movies once upon a time. What the f*** got you so obsessed with this swirly camera shit? Because it's f***ing annoying. Movie makes sure Dr. Calvin devolves into Mary Jane Watson by the finale. Um, what is this glowing center pillar made of? And why can he kind of grab it and slow his descent? And what is it made of? And why does this movie hate me? I think that's what Dr. Lanning would have wanted. Oh, the Lanning who created a supercomputer that instigated a robot uprising and killed himself, thus avoiding any moral or legal fallout from that, you know, apocalypse scenario? Yeah, f Lanning. And Sonny became Robot Jesus to the other robots, and he saw that it was good. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? Freeze! LFD, freeze! There is a robot in this formation that does not belong. Identify it. I am Bender. Please insert girder. One of us. Google Gobble. Google Gobble. One of us. 1,800 pounds and do whatever the heck I want. I can respect that. Do you hear the people sing? Sing the song of angry men. Sugar. I'm sorry. Give me sugar. Kitty.